Hi all, and welcome to my channel, Fred Makes Things, and another sewing video for you. We are on the last Wednesday of the month, which usually means something that I have scrounged up, thought up, created on my own um, kind of video. Um, the majority of my month is usually taken up with Sewers Club things, and I usually re reserve this last month to do something different. This last week, I should say, to do something different. But um, I, I didn't. I sort of did, but I didn't. Um, the thumbnail has already kind of shown you what we're talking about today, um, and I just want to kind of talk about it. So we're doing a buffalo check lap blanket, like little lap quilt for you today that I got off of Sewers Club. So um, we're going to do this video in a few parts like we always do these videos in. Part one is going to be talking about uh, what Sewers Club is uh, and why I'm making the or why I chose to make the thing I chose. Part two is making the thing I chose. Part three is uh, pros, cons, and user error while making the thing I chose. And then part four is my final thoughts and uh, sign off. Um, so part one, Sewers Club. What is Sewers Club? Why are we talking about Sewers Club when we're not talking about a project box or a stash builder? Well, uh, first off, Sewers Club is a monthly subscription box where you get everything you need to make of a project. Um, they also have an online store where you can buy fabric and patterns and a bunch of other fun stuff. Uh, thirdly, they also have a um, second subscription stash builder. A stash builder is a bunch of fat quarters or half yards that you can get in various configurations. Um, all of that stuff is on their website. A little bit of information has been on the screen for you as well, um, I'm trying to make this quick because this video is not about Sewers Club in general. But if you are curious about Sewers Club, their project box, or their stash builder, I do have an affiliate code for those products. Code FRED will save you $12 Canadian on uh, a subscription box. And code FRED30 will save you 30% off. Um, the Stash Builder Bundle. If you're interested in those or learning me talk or hearing me talk more about those specific items, um, I will link my most recent Sewers Club project unboxing video here for you. I'll put my most recent Stash Builder boxing as an end card. Um, but anything like that, if you see anything that says Sewers Club Project or Stash Builder, I go into further detail in those. Um, and I do want to just say again, it's an affiliate code, so you save some money. I make a small commission and Sewers Club possibly gets a new um, customer. So it's a win all the way around. Now let's say talk about why we're still talking about Sewers Club. Uh, Sewers Club puts out um, a monthly like blog that they do and they give you like fun tips and tricks and um, it's like a lovely little like newsletter that they post and sometimes in those letters they provide free patterns um, and I've been kind of curious about them. And in a future video, you will see me do a few different um, styles of their quilt blocks because I'm heavily into quilting, quilt planning right now, trying to kind of understand it. So um, this pattern that we're talking about, photo is up on the screen for you, is a buffalo check lap blanket. The finished size is approximately 42 inches by 54 inches. So right, it's like a lovely little lap blanket, couch blanket throw, if you will. Um, it's completely free, can be found on their website. I will link the tutorial page down in the comment section, or down in the description box for you as well. So 
that's what we're doing today. We are discussing the making of my very first quilt, really. It's very simple. Second, mm, it depends on what your definition of quilt is. This is my very first planned quilt, um, quilted style throw, but I do have an older throw, one of my very first projects. Um, so when I first got my sewing machine, I made myself slip covers for my sofa because my sofa uh, was starting to show wear and tear earlier than it should have. And I wanted to cover up some of that wear and tear with lovely slip covers. Now, when I first did the measurements on those slip covers, I messed up and cut some things wrong. Um, that whole adage, measure twice, cut once, really should have applied there. But I ended up um, flying through some fabric um, and not being able to use it on the slip cover. So I had to go out buy new fabric and make it over again. Um, and then I had all of these leftover um, unusable uh, and also the wrong color because I changed the type of fabric I was using strips. And I decided I needed to do something with them. And so I said, oh, let me try to make a throw blanket with it. So I pieced all of the strips together, cut them down, kind of put them, laid them out in a very, um, I want to say sporadic pattern, but that's not the word I'm thinking. If I remember the word I want to say, That'll flash up on the screen for you as well. But I wanted something that didn't look planned, that kind of looked like it's like, oh, um, this just happened kind of look. Um, it's red and white and gray. Um, I picked up some fleece for the back of it. Uh, and I, um, Bind, or did binding on it before ever knowing what binding was or how to do it. Uh, and it turned out really cool. I've had it for a long time. I've had it longer than I've had those slip covers. So um, I really, really like it. I still use it all the time. Right now it's, I think it's folded up, but um, you've been looking at a photo of it. And that was my very first lap blanket. And so now uh, I digressed too much, but now I'm making my second lap blanket. That first one was me kind of figuring out my sewing machine and how to sew, how to make things. This one was planned, more structured, um, and pretty cool. So I, so why did I decide to make this now? I have a new couch in my living room. Um, when I ever do another updated house tour, uh, you will see that um, I did a spare room tour last week, but um, there there may be a house tour in the works. I don't know. But anyway, I have a new sofa and I wanted a throw blanket to match my sofa and I didn't really have anything that worked. And so I went out and got this black, white and gray um, fabric. I needed three quarters of a meter of a white background three quarters of a meter of a mid-toned color, that's this gray, and half a meter of a dark toned color, that's red. The um, sample of the quilt is a red buffalo check, but my couch was black and I kind of, or is gray, like a charcoal gray, so I wanted to go with kind of like uh, a more muted color palette. Um, all of this stuff is in the um, instructions on their uh, tutorial page or what have you, so you don't need to take my word for it. But anyway, so the idea though with Buffalo Check is that like the two colors that you choose overlap each other and make the third color, right? So when white and black overlap, they become gray. All right. So when I was picking out fabric, I wanted to find like a mid toned kind of gray. I didn't want anything too white. I didn't want anything too dark. And I didn't want anything that had too much of another color in it. 
So like to me, this is a pretty true gray. When I look at it, I don't see like a lot of yellow or a lot of green or anything like that. Um, I'm sure if I messed around with it, I'd find some of its undertone. But for me, this was really, really great. So I started with these initial colors. I picked up uh, an uh, extra wide black binding tape. I had to get two of them. Um, I think they're a 0 0.75 inch width. It's called double extra wide. Oh, I, I lost the piece of paper for it. But um, I picked up black that. And then a couple of weeks later, I went back when they were having all of their um minky fabric and fleece on sale and I picked up like a gray that's similar to my gray as my backing material so this is a very monotone um very simple kind of color palette um, probably the simplest color palette I've ever done but it turned out really really well so all of the instructions everything like that like I said is on the thing in a printable pdf I printed the pdf I cannot for the life of me find it I just followed the instructions off of my phone. So let's get into part two uh, and talk about assembling the project. This was surprisingly easy. So first off, you pick your colors, you iron your fabric. This might be a time when you wanna wash your fabric before using it. I didn't, I never do. I probably should. I do when it's clothing but I don't want it stuff like this. But anyway, um, I picked my fabric, I ironed all of my fabric, and then I got to work. Now they have two different methods of, of working with this. Method one is like cutting out all of your fabric at once and then piecing it together. And then method two is um, cutting out long strips and then sewing those strips together and then cutting those strips into like uh, blocks um, that you then work with. I went with method one, so I'm only going to talk about method one, but just know that there are two different methods for this. So what did I need to do? Remember fabric A is white, fabric B is the mid-tone gray, and fabric C is your dark your black. So in fabric A, I needed to cut out 20 six and a half by six and a half inch squares. In fabric B, I had to cut out 31 six and a half by six and a half inch squares. You need the most of this because this like is your overlapping piece between these two, right? So you need more of these to complete the look. And then in fabric C, you needed 12 six and a half by six and a half. You need less of these just because of the way that the rows are all spaced. So quarter inch seam allowance is what they recommend, but as long as you keep your seam allowance the same as you're sewing, um, your blanket will either just grow or shrink in size. The key is to keep your seam allowance consistent. So they were suggest a quarter of an inch, and that's what I did. Um, they showed you how to lay out the squares in the pattern that you need. Um, I don't think they told you. Yeah. So they had you lay out the squares that you needed. Um, you needed to sew basically your blocks together. So you needed to sew your A and your B pieces together to make 18 blocks because you cut out um, well, you cut out 20 pieces of white, but, um, you needed to make 18 blocks of A and B. So you're white and gray. And then you needed to sew together 12 blocks of your B and C, um, out of your, what was it? 12. Yeah. So all of your black gets sewn into your gray, 18 of your white gets sewn into your gray, and then you have some left over. Um, you have a few remaining pieces and so then you sew your fabric, your three pieces of fabric A, B together in A, B, A. Again, the, the uh, instructions show you they have a lovely um, diagram for you to follow. 
Hi, Mama. Squeaking indicates that Susie has arrived. Sorry, had to take time out for Susie's love. Uh, anyway, so then you arranged all of your um, blocks together. So what I did is I sewed these in long strips and uh, of alternating A, B, B, Cs. So you have your two blocks of A, B, you have your blocks of B, C. I sewed, I attached A, B, and B, C together with the whites rotated. So you go white, gray, black, white. And then your next one would be white, gray, black, white. And I did that going down for the amount of rows that they said to do. Which was nine rows. This ended up with three longer columns of the same look. And then you had your end section, which ended up being your leftover um, white and gray pieces, your AB, with your third AB, A piece. So all in all, you end up with nine rows down and seven rows across. Um, so when you have all of your long lines sewn together, your three columns, then you join those columns together. I paid really close attention to making sure that my corners all matched so you had really clean um, seams when you came out. The instructions said to iron the seams in opposing directions so everything nests together. I have such a hard time remembering which direction I'm supposed to be ironing them down. Like if I could iron them like down towards the black or up towards the white or whatever. So I just opened all of my seams up instead and ironed my white to my white, my black to my black, my gray to my gray, right? So on and so forth. So I had open and flat seams that way rather than um, the other way. And then when you um, pieced everything together, because you have equal um, fabric on each si sides, I think that the nesting comes together very well. Um, and then that was basically it for making the quilt top. Um, it was really fast, right? It took me... I actually have a six and a half inch by six and a half inch quilting uh, ruler grid thing. So being able to like um, cut a six and a half inch strip of fabric and then holding that ruler down and cutting and cutting and cutting, it went really fast. It took me, I wanna say 45 minutes or so to cut out all of my squares. It took me probably an hour and a half. I know mama. I know. She's suddenly very needy. She's normally not. Ooh. So um, it took me about an hour and a half to sew all of my pieces together. It all didn't line up as perfectly as I wanted to, but you can see that my columns look really good together. And then sometimes it was just assembling the rows that got a little bit wonky. So from there, I then had to proceed to actually quilt this. And I chose not to do any sort of batting or um, fusible fleece or anything like that as a lining. I just went straight from quilt top to the minky fleece. And I did this because I wanted it to be really lightweight and easy to fold up um, and take care of. Like I find that um, minky fleece, fleece in general is warm enough for a little snuggle. I don't need anything too thick, too plush. So I just um, cut my fleece to size, um, giving myself what I thought was a generous overhang on all sides to then quilt down my blanket. Um, in my original quilt, what I did is I just uh, sewed the blanket down, or what? Else? In my original blanket, I don't know.
don't even know what I'm trying to say. I made it this the original blanket the same way I'm making this one. So I don't know where I was going with that thought. But anyway, so I then laid out the minky blanket, right? It was cut to size, put the um, quilt top over the top of it, pinned it down in a bunch of places, and then took it to my sewing machine. The plan was, instead of trying to go on like a diagonal or something like that, I would just sew it down a quarter inch on either side of all of my seams to make a like a square kind of pattern. On the top, it's quite subtle. On the underside, you can kind of see the two differences. And I really like that. I did it all in black um, and it looks really cool. Now I did not uh, succeed my first time. It took me four or five attempts to finally get the blanket to um, lay flat and to work with me. I ended up taking out all of the pins and everything that I had done and just rolled the blanket and I sewed row or column really. I sewed Actually, no, I sewed row. I sewed row by row by row um, down, slowly unrolling the blanket as I went, unrolling it on one side and rolling it on the other side so that my workable area, which was only about eight or nine inches, um, was really flat on my sewing machine. So I held everything down flat and I moved it through and then I checked every single um, row, seam, stitch as I went. So I did an entire length and then I right pulled it out, took a look, made sure that everything was in place. And then I did the other seam, pulled it out, took a look, and then I moved along that way. So even though that the building of the quilt top didn't take me very long, like I said, only start to finish maybe two and a half hours, three hours at most the quilting on the back or the quilting to make everything flat with the amount of times I had to start over took me like an entire night like five hours or something like that um and then the final step was to bind the quilt and I did it the way that I understand how you're supposed to do binding I opened up the binding completely and used the fold mark in the binding um lined up so you line your binding edge up with your quilt edge um, and then I you sew in your binding mark like the binding fold and it makes a really clean binding um, I did a fun trick with the corners that I just learned and that's to stop right at your whatever your width of the binding is usually half an inch um, and then go down down to your corner on a miter edge and I saw someone do like a really short stitch on that so most of my binding was done at like a mid-length stitch and then that was done at like a one um, and then that way you didn't really need to worry too much about doing your back stitch or anything lifted everything up um, turned the quilt and went down the next way I forgot to say that before I did all of this I did square um, my quilt with my backing after it had been quilted right because like I said the backing was larger so I did square that first and then I proceeded with the binding I ended up needing two almost entire packages of the binding strips I only have about eight inches nine inches left of the binding everything else was used up so I did my first run on the back and then I folded it everything together did my run my second run as a top stitch around everything I did that as a four but because I was stitching black binding on or black thread onto black binding you couldn't really see it um but yeah all in all the project took me three days uh, an evening to do the cutting and piecing of the quilt top an evening to do the quilting and then get annoyed start over several times and then another evening to do the binding the binding only took me about an hour and a half to do um, and it came together really well I think it's my best binding ever and I think the key was that I was extremely patient with it and I was really careful about squaring everything out so now that I've talked about what this is I'm sure you want to see what this actually ended up looking like 
Now I don't have enough space on my camera lens to um, show you everything. Do excuse the cat hair. I've had this um, finished quilt floating around now for, I don't know, about a week and a half or so. And the cats really, really like it. I did wash it because I wanted it to get that like washed crinkled look. I also wanted to get all of the extra threads and stuff off of it. But as you can see, right, here's a section of the black with the white, right, and the gray on the sides. You can see here, that one's wonky. You can see here, right, I did a stitch on each side on both sides to create just a really simple quilt look. This is runs all the way throughout the entire quilt. You can only really see the cat hair on the black back black. Here's my binding. That's a mess. But anyway, so here are my corners, right? You have a lovely mitered edge on the bottom, a slightly less nice clean edge on the top, but it still looks pretty nice when you look at it as a whole. Here's the minky underside. Right, so you can kind of see, um, it's not straight, right? There are some puckers and stuff like that, all right? But you can see the pattern in it with the thread. Here's the black binding on the back, right? Here's your corner, like that's a nice looking corner, all right? The top's not terrible either. That's a bit of a pucker there too, but again, like I don't think it's bad for my first attempt at actually following like an official quilt plan. Um, yeah, I can see that I still have some loose threads. Like I said, we've snuggled on the couch, right? It's quite cozy. It is very thin, right? Which is what I was going for, but it's not to everybody's taste. Sometimes you want like that really thick, cozy blanket. This is on the thinner side, but it's still nice and nice and cozy so let's get into pros cons and user error i'm just folding this so i can show you one of the biggest user errors oh actually before we do that or i guess we can do it in user error too um okay so pro i really like how simple this tutorial is following it on their instructions was really good um, like I said I did method one but there is method two that you could do as well um, the uh, instructions were clear and concise and made everything make sense so I really like that I really like the colors that I chose um, when I'm planning sewing projects, I tend to plan um, brighter, more like bold, vibrant kind of colors. Um, I'm a very, I'm uh, in my sewing. I'm very drawn to color and patterns and prints. Um, in my everyday, like what I wear around the house, what I wear out kind of life, I'm very much more like um, muted and sedate. So. This actually speaks more to my personal style, but uh, it's a vast departure from my sewing style, if that makes any sense. Um, so I really like that about it. I, I also like that it's free and it's like, if you are just starting to think about getting into quilting or piecing things together, this is a really nice, simple tutorial to follow. Um, cons. I do wish it was a little bit bigger. If I make this again, which I probably will, I would add another one or two, um, rows to it and maybe one more column, um, uh, just because it's a nice size, but my husband who's six foot three, 
Um, he can't he can't snuggle under this. It's a little it's too small for him. So if I were to make something, I'd make it a little bit bigger so that he'd be able to be like head to toe kind of snuggled under it on the couch. Uh, uh, he's a human furnace, so he doesn't normally need a blanket. But on the odd times that he does, um, this one is just a little bit too small for him. Uh, the other con is if you are brand new to quilting, it would have kind of been nice for them to walk you through like um <clears throat> your finishing steps for the quilt as well but all they say is quilt and attach the binding so like they don't give you a whole lot of um, instruction on that last bit but you can find that kind of stuff online right there's a million sewing tutorials quilting tutorials out there so for me it's not a huge deal but it is a bit of a con but again like can you really complain when um the fabric or the pattern is free um so let's talk user error so i said like some of my seams didn't match up and as i was talking before i just wanted to show you one like this one here there's a few probably in this section right that you can see right my gray ends here and then starts here so that's not straight but i think that it's camouflaged a bit more when it's kind of hidden in the quilting because like it took me a minute to find that like this one's also not like lined up properly which means yeah see that one's really bad like that one's not lined up at all and then i'm guessing nope that one's pretty decent that one's pretty decent so there are those and then my biggest user error See, I folded this as I was talking so I could find it. It's right here. And that is, even though I laid it out, I planned it well, I had like quite a bit um, overlap in the fabric so that um, I had everything lined up and everything was working well. When I start... Um, the reason I just like start over or start and stop the quilting a bunch of times is that this lining, like this minky fleece kept shifting on me and I ended up having like open patches, right? And then where there was no fleece attached to the quilt. And then as you go further down, it got worse and worse and worse. So somehow everything was kind of angling out. And I thought that the last time that I did it, I fixed the problem. So I managed... I usually by the third row I was like oh like I've made a mistake but this time I managed to get like one two three and then on the fourth row it was starting to give me a hard time and at this point I was done and I did not want to have to tear out all of that um, beginning reposition everything and then put it back again so I just cut out a piece of fleece lined it up i thought that i had the directions the same but i'm not sure if i do let's pucker but um lined up this new piece of fleece uh cut it sewed it and then just kept quilting and as you can see starting at the bottom here right it's quite a bit bigger of a gap than up here right like you can see this angle getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I do not know how it happened. When I make quilts in the future, I am gonna get like a, a spray to stick this down onto the quilt top so that it doesn't shift as much um, so that this isn't the problem. But this, this was a problem right from the very first um, row that I stitched down or that I quilted down and I didn't even know it so yeah that's this quilt here are some photos for you as I talk um final thoughts and sign off um so final thoughts. I really like this. I'm really excited to have it. I think it looks great on my couch. Um, it's been washed once. It washed really well. I forgot to put in a dye catcher and my white came out white and my black stayed black, which made me really, really happy because washing a white and black unwashed thing together can 
uh, unwashed fabric together can really can, can cause some issues. Um, but I'm really happy it all came out. I'm really happy with this quilt in general. I do plan on making more of them in the future and I'm, I'm really just enjoying it. And like I said, the cats really like it too. Susie's on this all the time. Um, and I've caught Vincent on it too, but he likes to pretend that he's interested in nothing and that nobody matters. So when you catch him enjoying himself, he tends to like get up and walk away. Um, so yeah, what do you think of this, my first attempt, or second attempt, but my first official attempt at, um, making a little lap quilt? Do you like it? Are you happy with the, the, the three colors that I chose? Like, do you think this gray works well with the white, or should I have gone lighter or darker? I'd be curious to hear, um, all of that stuff in the comments section. Um, and yeah, so if you want more sewing content, think about subscribing. Every single Wednesday we do sewing. I think next Wednesday, Wednesday's going to be an unboxing of Sewers Club of some kind. Either the Stash Builder or the, um, uh, Project Box. Uh, I just got the Stash Builder in the mail today, so I'm going to be unboxing that next. But um, I'm going to hold off posting it until I know whether or not Stash Builder is going to arrive in time for next Wednesday's video. So look forward for that. Uh, then the Wednesday after that will either be a um, brand new pattern review or Stash Build or uh, the project box. So we'll just see. Mondays are miscellaneous. This coming Monday is going to be our resin review. Um, after that, probably heading into like cat lady and stuff unboxings. And then Friday is our long term paint by number project. We are well in the, uh, middle of this project. Uh, the end of this cat is planned for the end of February. So that, or end of October. So if that interests you, think about subscribing. So I gotta go. Um, like this video if you liked it, if you've made it this far. Um, I'd be really curious to um, see that. And yeah. All right. This is video one of three that I'm filming today. So it's time to get on to the next one. So I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. And I will talk with you again soon. Bye.